So welcome to the third session of the day. The next session is Leverage Ansible Security Automation in DevSecOps by Sumit Jaiswal. So we are starting with the next session. Allow me with a minute. Apology, I'll just restart. Give me a minute. Yeah, for the Ansible business units. And thanks for joining this session. In this talk, we are going to cover how Ansible security automation can help Dev and SecOps teams. Let's have a look at what we're going to discuss today. Firstly, I'm going to discuss, share what Ansible security automation is and how it can help security automation or security teams. Sumit Jaiswal is then going to provide some real world use cases and examples of how Ansible security automation can integrate with IDPS systems, with firewalls, and with CMs. Let's get started. What is Ansible Security Automation? Well, before I get there, I'd like to share some analysis of what's happening in the market. Gartner predicts that this year, 2021, the spend on cyber security is going to surpass $150 billion. But counterintuitively, if we look at what we are seeing in the headlines of all the increased cyber attacks and the, the increased cyber breaches, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, the Cyber Resiliency Organization provided a report which has some great insight that I'd like to share with you. Of all the alerts that security teams are getting, they're only able to respond to 5% of this. And the predominant reason for this is because the, between a mid-size organization and a large-size organization, they'll have between 20 and 40 security devices that they need to protect their organization with. However, they go from different vendors and they perform different tasks. There isn't really, a, and they all provide alerts in a very specific way. So it's very impossible to get all these alerts or address all of the alerts. Also, counterintuitively, again, the, um, the amount of time it takes for security teams to respond to a cyber incident has increased. Right? With all that, if all that money has been put and invested in it, why is this occurring? There's several reasons for it. 
The first and predominant reason is the severity of the cyber attacks has increased, as well as the throughput and volume of the cyber attacks has significantly increased these days, especially taking for the fact that, you know, our working, working circumstances have changed. Also, if we look at how security teams look after a traditional data center, and because of the lack of integration between the different security tools, there's a lot of manual tasks. But organizations are expanding. They're looking at including cloud computing models. They're trying to create microservices architectures and move to a cloud native environment or practices. These manual tasks uh, that security practitioners use because of the lack of integration is just not going to scale and be agile enough to keep up with that. There's also a large need for more skills within the security space. Companies are extremely willing to pay for it and extremely willing to hire. There's just a lack of those skills. On average, they say, if there's 100 developers within an organization, there's usually 10 people in the operations team. And for the 10 people in the operations team, there's going to be one person who's trying to look after this and secure all of this. They are overwhelmed and inundated. I've mentioned that the severity of the cyber attacks has increased, and this is because the actors who are writing this malicious code who are actually performing the attacks have embraced to ideas and, and products and methodologies such as AI and machine learning and automation where security teams now traditionally are still relying on a lot of manual tasks. Let's imagine we're, we're a security practitioner and we're just even trying to investigate if the threat, well, if the threat is malicious. Well, he would, uh, that person, we would have to log into maybe five different user interfaces. Uh, we would have to go and manually input the same data again. You know, it's error prone. Human error is a real factor. Thankfully, the organization and the security ecosystem realize that automation is going to be vital for security teams to be able to keep up with the new demands. This is where Ansible security automation comes into the picture. We have had as Ansible a tremendous success within the infrastructure space, within the networking space and the app space to name a few. Ansible security automation expands that portfolio, that success to now include the security space. It's important though to mention firstly, that we are not a security product ourselves. We are only there to be that conduit, to be that integration layer between these multiple vendors and multiple security tools. We augment them. We provide the security teams the capabilities, the tools, the integration to ensure that if there is indeed a cyber attack, right, they are able to create and mount an effective response a lot quicker. We also uh, integrate with the different teams with security for sure, but we elevate that automation so when security teams do have the automation in place, they can now share this with the rest of the organization and form part of an effective remediation plan. Adopting automation in security is a journey. And from what we've seen in the market, we see there's three main parts to it. Systematic is when a practitioner or a team are just looking to, to automate one task. They want to do it with more speed and they want to do it with more, more consistency. Here, the human readable YAML language that Ansible provides is vital to this. It makes it easy for them to do so. Moving up, as they become, a, they move to the systematic layer, this is where the security teams now want to be able to share their automation beyond their domain to other domains within the IT organization or the security practice. This is where Automation Controller, formerly known as Ansible Tower, provides role-based access control, APIs, credential management, just to name a few, to help them do this. At this stage, 
we also see security tools such as a security information and events management system or a CM. And what those tools do is they provide alerts and aggregate all the logs to provide analysts the capability of identifying and classifying security threats. Ansible Automation Platform and Ansible Security Automation has integration to supported CMs, which opens up a new avenue for analysts. Usually, if they had to increase the verbosity of a log, as an example, they would have to reach out to their team. However, in a safe, controlled, and consistent manner, they are able to actually directly start changing the verbosity of a log on a specific device, re reducing a lot of the operational overhead. Moving to institutionalized, these, th in, these organizations have a mature security posture. They have an effective uh, remediation plan in place. Their compliance, their auditing, their, and their regulation requirements are all met. At this stage, you'll see tools such as a security orchestration and automated response platform, or a SOAR. And a SOAR gives the organization the capability of mapping and creating business processes and mapping it to a security remediation plan or a compliance plan, et cetera. And what we can do as Ansible, and once again, just to say we are not there to compete, we are there to augment, we are that integration layer. We enable supported source to increase the footprint uh, that they can reach for, for if the, to, to ensure that the tasks are performed correctly, to ensure that the remediation uh, plan is executed correctly, to ensure that there's ordering and compliance because Ansible has such a wide footprint across the IT domain. What we've done with Ansible Security Automation is we have created three high-level use cases. The first one is investigation enrichment. Let's imagine once again that we are a security analyst and we noticed an alert, but we need more information about this. That would usually be a phone call. That would usually be a meeting or a ticket that, would, that they would have to submit to that relevant firewall team or IDPS team. Using Ansible Security Automation, that analyst can actually go and do and increase the verbosity or include more logs from different devices into that CM, getting more and more insight into what is happening and being able to classify what, what the cyber threat is. When it comes to threat hunting, that's at mostly at a preventative layer. In other words, Ansible Security Automation allows them to update signatures as an example, on an IDPS device. It be, uh, allows them to integrate a later security bulletin and ensure that that is applied organization-wide. Whereas the security analyst, again, let's, let's imagine that uh, that person has to change a specific signature on an IDPS device. Now they have the capability to do so from the CM portal. As we move to incident response, I have chatted about how it takes so many different teams to work cohesively to be able to provide an effective response to a cyber attack. Ansible Automation Platform and the tools it provides, as well as Ansible Security Automation, provides that collaborative environment where different teams can describe their requirements, can describe their needs, and work together to create these workflows to form part of a larger, the larger security remediation plan, eliminating the manual steps that are usually required and reducing the time it takes to actually go and fix that cyber attack. Because remember, the more time an organization is exposed, the more risk it introduces. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Sumit Jaiswal. Okay. Uh, hi, all. Uh, thanks, Craig, for setting up this stage for Ansible Security Automation and also giving us the overview of what Ansible Security Automation is and all about and why security automation has become a, a necessity and how Ansible Security Automation initiative can help uh, enterprise customers as well as uh, the individual users equally to automate their security needs. So, uh, 
before moving on uh, to the discussion, uh, I'll just like to try, I'll just give a brief intro about myself. So my name is Ovid Jaswal, and currently I'm working as a senior software engineer uh, for Ansel Content Team, where I'm largely focusing on uh, security content side of it. Okay, so first thing uh, we'll discuss about is the firewall management. So we can move to the next slide. So here we'll discuss uh, discuss about the incident response scenario. Where in this scenario, basically uh, we have identified an attack, and we need to block uh, access to a specific machine that find itself the target of the attack. By using content from ACL Manager Security Automation roles, uh, we are able to block access uh, via a playbook. And because we are in using variable as input, these variables can pass uh, dynamically as well. And alternatively, this could be this information basically can also be supplied to Ansible Tower job via an input template or through Tower API call and uh, for further for further integration. So continuing on the same uh, use case of incident response, here we are using uh, uh, Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, which is Cisco FTD, to deny access via creation of security intelligence, UR, uh, intelligence URL policy. And this basically is to highlight that in a single playbook, we could remediate the situation across multiple devices in the infrastructure from, the multi from multiple vendors. And this capability will continue to grow and expand and mature because uh, as time goes on, uh, we'll keep on adding new vendors and we'll keep on partnering with uh, new vendors to come up with the integration with Ansible. Okay, so this uh, slide talks about bring, uh, uh, bringing in uh, dev workflows with the CI. So if you think from a developer's perspective, uh, we can consider bringing security practices and policies into the development workflows. And in this particular scenario, we have a CI environment that's provisioning a, a new minimal set of production infrastructure, but typically details of uh, enterprise security policies and the devices, which if ignored, uh, will have a negative effect on the validity of our integration test. So if you use Ansible to provision and set up the CI environment, we should allow dev team to simply use the existing and the same security uh, policy Ansible playbooks in their CI, such that they can actually test like production and can actually validate and verify if the test traffic flows or works as expected. And this in turn ensures that application developers are mindful of their application requirement, which has been given from the security team and are mindful of those you know, points uh, while developing. So this slide may look like something, uh, 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 some fancy slide, and uh, this all may sound like some fantasy, but it actually works because our security workshop are tested and verified using the same uh, scenario, where uh, we are actively testing these type of scenarios. So here we are trying to put on our idea that uh, your operation team, your security team, and your development team all are coming together and trying to design on the CI pipelines which is very much similar to the production pipeline. And all your security policies and uh, uh, all the system related stuff are being tested over uh, in your CI before we move on to the production system. Because uh, if you use, if you check and if you test the uh, security policies in your CI system before going into the production, uh, before that goes into this uh, production, we can actually verify that everything works and there is no gap from or uh, from this, uh, which can be breached from security side. So now comes uh, the intrusion detection prevention system management. So here, uh, in this scenario, basically IDS and IPS knows which traffic is expected to reach to your application and what all traffic is not expected to reach to the application. And here we have taken an example of new signature, which has been added to SNORT checkpoint 14 it uh, to check if someone is doing a DDoS simulation or doing some SQL injection. So if you see this playbook is using Ansible role, which is IDS rule role. Uh, it is actually uh, developed and maintained by Ansible security automation engineers. And this Ansible role is to manage vendor agnostic IDS rules to add a new rule uh, 
using the snort backend provider so the backend provider tells the role which ids utility on the backend to target and allow secops administrator using ansible to have consistent user experience regardless of the ids solutions which is uh, your uh, uh, which is which can be your trend micro which can be your checkpoint which can be your uh, party net as well more details about the snort rule and how it is laid out um, you can go and check in the current workshop i'll uh, link all uh, i'll link the required uh, at the end of the slide deck so that you can go ahead and check out um, for yourself okay so in this particular slide we are trying to create an ips sensor using 40 os uh, something you will immediately notice here is the amount of options that we have in comparison to the previous slide this is because and uh, this is also uh, this also highlights that we have the capability within ansible which in many cases to take full advantage of all the features available to a particular technology but providing abstraction for common use cases that all the vendors support so here as you can see currently it is using podios ips custom module which is a module written by uh, like uh, currently maintained by podinet uh, engineers so this is using a module and pre in the previous slide we were using a ids rule which was which was abstracting uh, the module functionality and if let's say you have to configure a module uh, like any particular ids role or any particular ips uh, cust uh, with custom requirements you can use the module itself and go ahead and configure those ips rules okay so so this is the slide which talks about the devsec op real world scenario uh, using zool ci uh, so zool ci is actually being uh, actively used in ansible ci powered system so as a devsec op practitioner we can actually apply this change set in a way that verifies the signature uh, we are looking for and potentially preventing the new classification of attacks that an application deployment in development might introduce moving on uh, to the security information and event management uh, that is sim so if we move on so we have currently support of ibm q radar and splunk and this is basically a use case where we talk about uh, the triage of uh, suspicious activities so here we are trying to add lock source and enable sim rule to generate offenses so here we are configuring the ibm q radar sim to identify the log data which is coming from checkpoint uh, next generation firewall and to process it uh, and it processes it uh, with appropriate parsers and filters then we enable a relevant curator rule so uh, you can see right enable a remote access, uh, remote excessive firewall denies rule so here we are trying to enable a curator rule based on the log source type so that we can trigger offenses based on the data coming from the log source appropriately so continuing the same slide uh same use case uh, you can see get info from the curator offense excessive offense so this actually gives you the detail of uh, curator offense info with the name of excessive offense and based on that particular uh, uh trigger you are actually assigning actions to offense so you can see right uh, we have used a curator offense action module with uh, the parameters like id status assigned to and protected so if it is coming from uh, a log source uh, uh, this can be enabled relevant uh, relevant rules can be enabled which actually ensures we are getting only relevant alerts not uh, false positive alerts uh, or the pseudo alerts okay so this talks about adding log source and enabling sim rule to generate offenses so once again from the developers perspective uh if we try to attempt and bring this to a devops workflow we will be we are uh, we'll be able to dynamically add the logs from our new web app into splunk okay as a log source and create a correlation search to enable the creation of investigation into splunk's enterprise security plugin sim plugin so while this is in, while this is something we can incorporate into a ci environment which is likely uh, which is more likely a common scenario if you are an enterprise structure uh this does not uh, do a regular deployment to dev test or stage or production environment 
we can ensure during the deployment to your uh, dev environment or the test environment that everything comes into play in Splunk as would be expected for your stage and production environment. So this uh, is a SecOps slide, which actually talks about the real-world scenario, which is uh, an end-to-end -end workflow for an attack, uh, where, where an attack is happening, and investigation and remediation is happening at the same time. And this allows us to decide how much or little we want to automate the process workflow, which can help us to figure out what could have been done better from automation prospects to avoid any other any future security breach, and uh, in turn, improve the process workflow. So this is a screenshot from a tower job template. So you can see here we have a tower workflow expression uh, of the process outlined in the previous slide, basically. So this shows each step uh, where uh, this shows each step being automated with information between stages of the workflow and remediation tasks to take. If the automation is not successful, then this template will properly alert the SecOps team with the information about the issues so that it may be triaged further. So much like an Ansible tower workflow, a CI pipeline is a series of tasks that can spawn one or many stages, some of which can be in parallel, and we can do a conditional approach as well. OK, so this brings us to the magical future of DevSecOps, where uh, uh, such that you have some sort of version control system uh, like Git, which is actually the source of truth for all the deployment logic from operations to the application and the security policies with all the appropriate component expressed as Ansible playbook, Ansible automation playbooks. And while this can be structured as one of the repositories, Whatever makes sense of the organization, the net effect of the workflow is same. This allows, uh, and this actually allows for cross-team collaboration, cross-team training and education, because here your operation team, your security team, your development team sit together and come up with all the approaches. And as uh, we enable a self-service portal for job delegation from SMEs to different group, all enforced by our bag, which is rollback access control. OK, so as I was talking uh, that I'll be uh, going over all the relevant uh, URLs uh, in the in, at the end of the slide deck. So these are all. So you can see, right, Ansible.com. Uh, at Ansible.com, we have a use case for security automation, which talks about what uh, use cases it covers and what it uh, offers. And we have a Mojo page as well, which is actually a Red Hat uh, internal page. and uh, there is a galaxy from where you can download the collection that I just showed in the examples. So there is uh, Ansible Security, which actually has uh, your ACL manager role, your IES rule, and other uh, there are other uh, roles as well. And apart from that, I talked about IBM Curator and Splunk Enterprise Security. So you can find those collection here, and you can download the download it from Galaxy Ansible. So the GitHub link for Ansible Security is github.com Ansible Security. Here is all the content that we are currently working on uh, are there. And you can go ahead and try to contribute, or you can go ahead and check out all the contents that we are currently offering. We also have a community page uh, for uh, over Wiki security automation. And we have a IRC handle as well uh, as hashtag Ansible Security. And as Craig has mentioned, mentioned earlier as well, that we are not uh, going to provide a security solution. We are trying to come up with uh, the existing uh, thing, whatever whatever there is in the security space, and we are trying to integrate with all the security use cases and with the vendors to come up with the uh, automation as a whole. Okay, so let's say if you have any use case or anything that you want to talk about from security aspect or um, uh, you want to come up with the automation of any particular use case, we love to chat with you. So please hang out on Ansible Security uh, with your questions or queries or anything. OK, so this brings us to the end of uh, our discussion. Uh, thanks a lot for joining the session. And uh, now we are open for the Q&A session.
So, well, that was awesome. Well, we have Sumit available. Uh, please feel free to share your questions if you have any. Sumit, I would request you to please click on share audio video button so that you can come on stage and you can join the stage. Sumit? If anybody have any question, please feel free to post in the chat section. Uh, we have another one hour for the break, lunch break. And after that, we would be having the next session. So if anybody have any question, please feel free to post in the chat. Well, I believe uh, Sumit. Uh, okay, I, I you can try refreshing your browser, Sumit, or you can just try to reconnect. Well, we have Craig. Welcome, Craig. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Well, I would love to, you know, learn more about DevSecOps. Probably I, I would get in touch with you. That was a nice <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Look, um, it's uh, it's an interesting, uh, DevSecOps is an interesting and a fascinating topic. I mean, we, we're hearing about it more and more um, as, as I think the whole DevOps you know, mature from past just the theme to actually getting down into the nitty gritty technical details of getting DevOps working. Same for security now, right? It, it was more of a, a goal, but what, what I'm personally seeing within organizations right now is that it, it's it's becoming more of a reality. And with that reality, uh, there, there's a lot of complexity that comes with it. So, so that's where automation is really, really important to help with that DevSecOps flow. Yeah, I can't hear you. I'm there sorry. <laughs> so, uh, as we don't have questions from the audience, probably I would, uh, you know, take this opportunity and I would like to understand. Somewhere you mentioned about the IBM Q radar. So, uh, how do we, you know, make use of that product in this uh, process or flow? Because I believe that's the propriety rule, right? Is is Sumit on? I'm not too sure. Okay, but uh, I'll, I'll have a I'll have a bash of it. Uh, he's the he's the technical guru. But uh, could you please repeat the question? And, okay, uh, so I was I was yeah. trying to understand uh, somewhere he has mentioned about the IBM Q radar product. So, right. okay, we have Sumit. Give me a minute. Let me just allow right. him. The expert is online. <laughs> hey, Sumit. How are you? Hey all. Okay, uh, so I think uh, the question is apart from Ansible security, the rest of platform mentioned in the security pipeline a proprietary example for in it. Is that the question? That's the first question uh, that's that's come through on the chat. And then okay. Hemant also asked the question about how Q radar fits into a, a security incident or response flow. Well, I believe the question is okay. in line uh, with so the same how, question. Uh, so for QRadar, are you able to hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Am I audible? Okay. Yes. 
So uh, Qreda is basically a lock provider's uh, same tool, right? So uh, we have Ansible modules with respect to Qreda. So uh, you can just uh, create a policy role uh, for in the Qreda, and then from that uh, you can, if you have any endpoint uh, enterprise endpoint security like uh, Checkpoint, Fortinet, or uh, uh, any of the like Trend Micro or others. So in that you can uh, set up your log source. And then you can start forwarding those logs uh, based on the rules from Qreda to your uh, uh, your uh, uh, and like uh, the firewall manager, uh, firewall manager like uh, Fortinet, Checkpoint, and others. So based on your uh, log source, you can take actions from your firewall log, you know, firewall manager. So that's how uh, this entire workflow can be automated. And I think briefly I talked about that as well. So yeah, it's not is an open source tool. Yeah, as Craig has mentioned. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for the information. And apart from that, I see Lenny's questions are that yes, uh, uh, so Fortinet is a propriety uh, firewall manager, but uh, we have come up with an integration with Fortinet. So if you see, uh, there is a Fortinet collections available on uh, GitHub. And you can directly use those modules to automate the uh, like uh, automate all the configurations based uh, from your firewall uh, using those modules. So for using those modules, you don't need any license or something. You can just uh, use those with Ansible. Awesome. Awesome. Do we so, have any other, uh, have any other... Uh, questions, Hemant? Uh, no, uh, that answers my you know 